an unprecedented breakthrough in the history of space travel is about to happen. Next Monday morning, SpaceX embarks on its boldest mission yet. For the first time, four ordinary citizens, not professional astronauts, will undertake a spacewalk mission by flying into space aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon. This flight marks a huge milestone in opening the doors of space to all of humanity. But how will it unfold? What risks await the crew? And how is SpaceX ready to ensure they're safe? All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before we get into the meat of today's content, we want to tell you, first of all, thank you so much for supporting this channel these last three years. We are getting very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers. But to achieve this, we do need your help. If you're watching this video right now and you watch our daily updates, kindly hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of our exciting content. And plus, that keeps the whole team here at Alpha Tech the motivation to continue to put out these videos for you to watch. And with that, we thank you for watching. All right, let's continue. First SpaceX spacewalk mission launches in a week. This will be epic, Elon proudly declared while sharing the latest announcement about the launch, which is sure to bring us new surprises. Of course, it all has its reasons. First announced in 2022, Polaris Dawn is the first experimental and developmental mission in a series of three under the Polaris program, which Isaac Minutes stated will undertake and fund in collaboration with SpaceX. The crew includes billionaire Jared Isaacman, a retired Air Force pilot, Scott Kid Petit, and two of SpaceX's top space operations engineers, Anna Menon and Sarah Gillis. The flight's scheduled for the morning of August 26th, and as of this video, that's only four days away. While previous space missions funded by wealthy entrepreneurs might conjure up images of self-indulgent joyrides, Polaris Dawn is an experimental mission designed to push those boundaries. The ultimate goal of Polaris is to take the first steps towards validating the technology that SpaceX will need someday to send humans deeper into space, including setting a record for Earth orbit altitude with an apogee of 1,400 kilometers, conducting the first commercial spacewalk using extravehicular activity EVA suit designed by SpaceX, demonstrating Starlink technology aboard the Dragon, conducting about 40 experiments from 20 partner research institutions. So after launch, the Polaris Dawn crew will take an elliptical orbit extending up to 870 miles from Earth. This takes them into deep into the inner region of the Earth's Van Allen radiation belt, which starts at an altitude of around 600 miles. According to NASA, the belt's an area where high energy particles from the sun are trapped and interact with the Earth's atmosphere, creating two dangerous radiation belts. Almost immediately after getting into space, Polaris Dawn crew will begin the process of pre-breathing to prepare for the spacewalk. It's kind of like what divers do to avoid decompression sickness, also known as the bends. Crew members must purge nitrogen from their blood so that when the Dragon capsule is depressurized and exposed to the vacuum of space, gases don't form bubbles in their blood, a potentially fatal condition. We don't have an airlock on this mission, Gillis said referring to the areas on board the ISS that serve as decompression chambers for astronauts heading out for a spacewalk, Polaris Dawn will instead take a really novel and different approach to the pre-breathing processes that involve slowly decreasing cabin pressure and raising oxygen concentration. Gillis, the lead engineer for space ops at SpaceX and the person who trained the Inspiration4 crew for their mission, mentioned that this process would take about 45 hours, close to two days, unlike any pre-breathing process on the ISS. Eventually, on their third day in space, Polaris Dawn crew will open the hatch of the Crew Dragon when they're about 435 miles from Earth. All four crew members, along with the entire interior of the spacecraft, will be exposed to the vast emptiness of space. However, only Isaacman and Gillis will actually step out of the spacecraft, tethered by a few umbilical cords. From beginning to end, Polaris Dawn will expose the crew to greater risks than other orbital space tourism missions, including SpaceX missions that transport paying customers to the ISS or orbit Earth at an altitude of around 250 miles. The biggest difference between the Polaris Dawn mission compared to other missions is that it will feature the first private spacewalk. For more than two and a half years, SpaceX and the Polaris Dawn crew have been prepping for this mission, overcoming numerous challenges. To better understand, NASA spent many years trying to find a viable replacement for the old bulky white spacesuit used on the ISS. However, Reisman noted that SpaceX's suit does not include primary life support systems, or the PLSS, which is essentially a backpack that allows the ISS astronauts to float more freely in space to do those complex tasks like repairing and replacing hardware outside the station. Instead, Polaris Dawn crew receives life support from long tubes that are connected to their spacecraft. Then there's the issue of the Crew Dragon itself. 
To ensure the spacecraft's avionic systems or the electronics used for navigation and communication could survive the heavy radiation environment encountered during the Polaris Dawn mission, engineers actually strapped many of the avionic systems to a stretcher and took them to a cancer lab, Isaacman said. Isaacman mentioned that the SpaceX team bombarded the avionics with radiation until they failed in order to precisely determine when and how this technology might break down. Let's hope it doesn't. According to Menon, when the Crew Dragon spacecraft is exposed to the vacuum of space, components inside the spacecraft might release toxic substances, a natural characteristic of some materials used to make various parts when the cabin is repressurized after the spacewalk. To prevent that, Crew Dragon and many hardware components on the vehicle underwent a pre-flight baking process. This means that it reduced a lot of those toxic substances before the flight, said Menon, a leading space operations engineer at SpaceX who will also serve as the crew's medical officer. This baking process involved placing the vehicle in a high-temperature vacuum chamber, allowing the hardware to release toxins before the flight. According to Menon, SpaceX also deployed an automatic restart software, which can fix computer malfunctions that might occur due to radiation without human intervention. So, how did SpaceX manage to minimize risks for the mission as much as possible? Of course, carrying out such a novel mission in under three years is extremely fast by aerospace standards. Going faster is not necessarily more risky, Reisman, a former NASA astronaut, said, referring to the rapid speed of development and extensive ground testing that SpaceX has carried out. Taking large risks in testing when the consequences of failure are low results in reduced risk later when the consequences of failure are high. But you should be nervous about this mission, he added. Anytime you try something for the first time, there are going to be risks. I'll feel much better when they're back inside with a hatch closed and locked after the spacewalk. SpaceX teams tried to mitigate risks and prepare for every potential challenge through a barrage of tests. Some as simple as putting a handrail into a freezing chamber is set the negative 90 degrees Celsius to see how cold to the touch a ladder might be when exposed to space, Isaacman said. They even took the spacesuits to a testing site at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. There, the suits were struck by small pieces of debris traveling at orbital velocities to see how they could withstand the micrometeorites and avoid punctures that would endanger the crew, according to Isaacman. Objects in orbit around Earth travel at more than 17,000 miles an hour. Adding to the pressure to perform a perfect spacewalk is the fact that time will be extremely limited because the crew's going to have to lean heavily on oxygen supplies during the pre-brief. We got five, six days. Maybe you can stretch it of life support on the vehicle, Isaacman said. So you have to really be sure where you have fault tolerance and redundancy in your systems. You got to be sure about the weather for the splash down to Earth. Speaking to the challenges the crew will face, Isaacman added, sure, there's more risk in a development program than going to and from the ISS, but not a lot more risk, and some risks are just frankly unavoidable. Isaacman said that while he and Gillis in turn will be free-floating outside the spacecraft, he said they'll fully exit the vehicle during the spacewalk. He said during the operation, they will be well above where the hatch is. We have a hands-free demonstration where it'll only keep our feet engaged in a mobility aid, and we're not just going to be floating around, Isaacman said. It takes a lot of effort to move in a suit when it's pressurized. What really looks like heavy clothing becomes super rigid when pressurized. So you want to be very deliberate in your movements. You want to make a good use of mobility aids. Gersten Meyer, who came to SpaceX following a decades-long career at NASA, said it's been a fun process creating the suits and now being on the cusp of seeing them used in practice. He described the process as leveraging knowledge from NASA, and then we push it a little bit further in other areas, making sure to share lessons learned along the way. This pace of development that we get to do at SpaceX is very much like the development that was required back in the early Apollo days, Gersten Meyer said. We're getting a chance to do that again, where we're really starting to push frontiers with the private sector and learning new things that we would not be able to learn by staying in the risk-free environment here on Earth. It's time to go out. It's time to explore. It's time to do these big things and move forward. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.